Hey yo everybody, Zian over here from Nintendo Life and today we're here to share with you our review of the long-awaited Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game complete edition on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Mitch Vogel for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. Digital games can be a wonderful thing. They don't run the risk of getting lost like physical game cards. You can have your library all in one place if you have a large enough micro SD card, and they grant indie devs an easier option for game distribution. Yet games like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game, also highlight the biggest drawback of digital releases. Only four years after the game's initial release in 2010, it was delisted from all storefronts due to licensing issues. And just like that, a well-received and unique brawler was wiped from existence, and only those who bought it during its original release could still play it. In the years since, there's been a consistent online push from fans who wish to see the game re-released from modern platforms, and after a whole lot of back and forth, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game Complete Edition finally came into being, and this time with a physical edition as well, which will be available soon thanks to the folks at Limited Run Games. And you'll be happy to hear that a decade on from its original release, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game proves to still be a top-tier brawler that feels like a great fit for the Switch hardware. For those of you who haven't seen the movie or read the comics, the story follows Scott Pilgrim, a slacker living in Toronto who begins dating a mysterious girl named Ramona Flowers. Unfortunately for Scott, the League of Seven Evil Exes is hellbent on controlling Ramona's love life, so he's got to take them all on in over the top fights to the death in order to win the right to continue dating her. Cocky movie stars, psychic vegans, and fireball throwing pirates are all par for the course here, making for an impressively distinct cast of unique characters to interact with. And as far as the game goes, this is all merely background information. The plot bears almost no relevance in the face of all the punching and explosive combos you'll be dealing. If you're looking to get story out of Scott Pilgrim, you should definitely read the comic books or watch the movie first, and then play the game, and everything will make way more sense. But let's face it, who really plays a beat em up for the story anyways? It's all about the action, and let us tell you, it's really solid. The real star of the show here is the arcade-like gameplay, which centers on a simple loop of clearing out screens of baddies, looting just enough change for the bus ride home from their corpses, and continuing this cycle until you reach the evil X of that stage. Each character has a light and heavy attack, and you can use these to chain together various combos to keep enemies juggled for as long as possible. And if you find yourself in a tight spot, you can also trigger an area of effect attack, which costs a few refillable gut points to pull off, or you can summon an ally to execute a powerful but costly move. There's a subtle aura of strategy underlying this gameplay, which is part of what makes it so engaging. Unlike many other arcade brawlers where it just feels like you're button mashing into oblivion, you need to be a little more thoughtful in how you approach combat here. Enemies hit hard, and if they knock you down, they won't hesitate to juggle you for a bit, and that takes huge chunks out of your health. Knowing how and when to apply your combos is critical, as well as knowing when to lay off the offense and make use of a well-timed block to negate a mean hit. This sort of ebb and flow goes a long way towards making the gameplay engaging. If you don't adapt your playstyle appropriately, it's easy to get rolled and see that game over screen all too soon. Thankfully, there are some light RPG elements to help alleviate some of the difficulty and to toss in a little more replayability. For example, cutting through enough enemies will see your character level up, usually unlocking new moves and abilities that open up new combat options, and it keeps the game feeling fresh. Through this, new players are slowly introduced to the complexities of the fighting system, and it also helps to give a nice sense of forward progression. Those of you who need a little extra boost for handling the tougher stages can also head over to one of the shops where you can buy consumables or permanent stat boosters. There isn't much variety here in terms of creating builds, but the the dribble of money you get ensures that you can never afford everything, meaning that you'll have to critically think about what's most valuable to you. All of this is to say the level up and equipment systems don't massively alter the core gameplay loop either, but they do help set it apart from just being another senseless arcade brawler. Single player is naturally supported here, but the best experience comes from playing in co-op. You can have up to four players together at once, and having an extra hand in taking down the waves of villains makes all the difference in the world. 
If someone goes down, they can be revived if their ally gets to them in time to restore them. If everyone is in sync with each other, you can pull off some impressive team attacks that really roll through the enemies. Like many other party games, Scott Pilgrim is the sort of game you, you sort of have to play with friends in order to really get it, unless if you're a huge fan of the series. You can play alone and it's still good fun, but there's an all important X factor sort of missing when you're playing single player, which just sort of dampens the enjoyment a bit. The distinct art style which really would go on to become a staple of many games created by the developers tribute was first utilized in this release and it's clear that the art team had quite a bit of fun of developing how scott pilgrim vs the world looks the comic's original art is mashed together with retro visuals to make for an intensely expressive and thoroughly fascinating visual style that makes each battle a real joy to behold whether it's the rapidly changing sets on a movie studio lot or a dive bar somewhere in toronto the backgrounds are filled with all sorts of little details and NPCs that make you want to stop and look, even when you're actively caught up in a massive fight. And all of this is backed by a stellar original soundtrack performed by Anamanaguchi. The famed chiptune rock band goes a long way towards giving Scott Pilgrim its distinct identity through mixing 8-bit video game sounds with punk rock music. And even though not every song is as memorable as the track of the first stage, Another Winter, this soundtrack provides the perfect tempo and energy needed to go along with the chaos of the combat. As this is the complete edition, this release also comes with plenty of extra nice goodies to sweeten the deal. All the original releases DLC is included here, which means you can play as a few new characters. And if you guessed Wallace was one of them, well, you'd guess right. And some extra side modes like dodgeball are also included from the get-go. In addition to this, online play has also been added for those of you that want to play with faraway friends. And there's even support for random matchmaking too. However, this is still the sort of game that you can only get around a couple dozen hours out of at most, but the extra content does nonetheless give you a bit more to chew on while it lasts. One of the only blemishes on this otherwise excellent brawler is the fact that the difficulty scaling can be a little out of whack in many places. However, the difficulty curve is scarcely a curve at all. Some levels feel like impenetrable walls that you pound your fist into time and time again until finally being lucky enough to break through, or until you feel like you've leveled up high enough or have purchased an equipment piece that'll boost your stats. And then some levels are an absolute breeze. Scott Pilgrim the game oscillates a bit too much between these two extremes, which can make for an experience that often feels weirdly paced. Our other hang up unfortunately is the online experience, which was rather rough for us. It's difficult to tell whether this has to do with pre-release server issues or a deeper problem, but actually getting into an online game is a bit of a trial. Sometimes you load in and everything seems just fine, then a sudden crash boots you back out. And even when we did get a stable game going, we encountered several glitches that ranged from being mildly amusing to completely halting further level progression. Suffice to say, your mileage may vary with the online, so local co-op is definitely the way to go here if you can. If this does become a continued issue, hopefully Ubisoft and the developers find a way to patch this out in the future. Those of you looking for the next Castle Crashers or Streets of Rage don't need to look any further, as Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game Complete Edition is a great beat-em-up for your Switch. Bombastic presentation and crunchy combat gameplay makes this one enjoyable from beginning to end. Though it can feel like it runs a bit short and the difficulty spikes can be rather intense, we'd give this one a strong recommendation to anybody looking for a fun, short game to play in co-op. Let's just hope it sticks around for longer than four years this time. Because we hate to say it, but this game makes us want to break out the L word. We here at Nintendo Life give Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game Complete Edition on the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you'd like to read our full written review, you can find that along with more news and information over at nintendolife.com. We'll also toss up a few more Scott Pilgrim videos up on screen here as well, like one from me where I basically lose my mind at the reveal of the Scott Pilgrim Physical Edition for Switch. The world needed that. It needed it so bad.